Um, I think it's the most expensive restaurant we've ever eaten at. Hey Stella Bellas and welcome back to my channel. Today's comment shout out goes to Melissa Raju and she said, I've been so busy that I only got to watch this video, this vlog today. The banana bread looked absolutely delicious. Thank you, Melissa, for your comment. If you would like a shout out in my next video, make sure to leave a comment on this one. Today, I realized why I don't film many sit down videos like this. It's because it just takes forever to set up and to get everyone quiet. If Trevino's not on a call, Ollie is barking or someone's doing something loud outside or it's just a mess. This is the third time I'm trying to film this video. So if you hear any background noise, please just deal with it. Thank you very much. So I went to Cape Town last week or the weekend before and I didn't vlog and I didn't intentionally create content. I just took a few photos here and there and I took like very short clips of everything because I saw a very cute TikTok trend that I wanted to do. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, you can go on my Instagram and TikTok and check out some of that content there. So let's talk about Cape Town. We got there at the butt crack of the morning on Friday. We fetched our car and Trevino dropped me off at our hotel and then he went to his meetings. We stayed at a place called Cape Town Lodge and we've stayed there once before, many years ago actually, there's a vlog about it. Um, I surpi uh, surprised, see I can't talk. I surprised Trevino with a weekend in Cape Town for his birthday and the place that I initially booked at, when we went to look at the place, it was very dodgy. It was literally like a house and each guest had their own room and there was no proper security, no proper parking and whatever. So it was very dodgy and we decided not to. And the only place that we found that had availability uh, for that one night was Cape Town Lodge. And I don't know how, but we spent quite a bit of money to stay in the penthouse and it was only one night. Cause I think we flew in on Saturday and flew back like on Sunday. So I don't know what was going on at that time but we stayed at Cape Town Lodge. So this was our second time staying there and I actually had to pay for early check-in. I think I paid about 345 Rand. I booked for the whole thing on booking.com and I paid for an early check-in because Trevino's meetings was I think like from 11 until 1 or 2 and check-in is only at 2. And I didn't want to roam the streets by myself. For some reason, I don't know why, and everyone that I've spoken to feels the opposite about this. So I feel safer in Joburg than I do in Cape Town, and I don't know if it's because I know Joburg more than I know Cape Town, but I was just not up to roaming around by myself. So I booked an early check-in, unpacked everything, got into pajamas, and watched Selling Sunset. Also, comment below if you've watched the reunion and if you have any thoughts, because I have a lot of thoughts. So that night was Friday night, and we went bougie and went to Nobu and Nobu is the only this Nobu in Cape Town is the only one in Africa and obviously if you're a Kardashian fan like I am then you know exactly what Nobu is so we went to that restaurant in this beautiful hotel called the one and only in Cape Town and one day I would love to stay there I had a look at the prices while we were there and it was like 10,000 per night so one day I will stay there but anyway we went to Nobu and I pre-booked on the website for something called sunset canapes. Um, and what was in the sunset canapes? We got two cocktails, um, two chicken tacos, small tacos, two pieces of sushi, two pieces of white bass, I think it was, four pieces of another sushi, and a dry miso salad. That was delicious. It was like baby spinach and like dry miso paste on it. It was divine. So we had that, and then we were like, you know what, YOLO, we, don't know when we're gonna come back to Cape Town and we don't know when we're gonna go to Nobu again. So we ordered more things. I don't have photos of the things that we ordered, Trevino might, but we ordered um, more sushi and then Trevino ordered Wagyu sliders and we paid like 450 Rand for two. So Nobu is very expensive. Um, I think it's the most expensive restaurant we've ever eaten at, but we did have a good time. And this platter, this platter for two, canapes for two situation thing was 300 Rand or 350 Rand. So if you just wanna try out the experience or go there for like pre-drinks or go there for like a snack, I would highly recommend it. It was such a good experience. The food was amazing, best sushi I've ever eaten in my whole life. And I would definitely, definitely go back to Nobu in a heartbeat. After Nobu, we went back to our hotel and changed 
um, Trevino changed fully. I didn't. I just took my heels off and put sneakers on. I still had the blazer on. And then we wanted to go out. So we went to La Parada. We just had snacks and drinks there. It's the second time I've been to La Parada. It was a very different vibe from the first time I've been there. So the first time I went there, there was a guy like playing drums and stuff. And this time there was an actual DJ and it was like my type of music. It was like um, 90s music, 90s R&B, but like remix, it was really, really good music. From there, we went to a place called Ahsoka. Now, if you're old like me and you watch Bollywood movies growing up, you will know that there's a movie called Ahsoka with uh, Kareena Kapoor and Shah Rukh Khan. So I was like, is this the same concept? What's happening here? Anyway, it was a very, very vibey restaurant. I think at night it becomes a bar. Um, but we did have snacks. I think we had snacks and we had drinks and everything was very dark But it was it was very chilled very cool vibe and then from there We went to a place called the gin bar because that was close to our hotel um, The gin bar I would I would say that I would say that the gin bar is like a combination of La Parada and Ahsoka because there was still like kind of a nice vibe, but the crowd was very La Parada crowd. I don't know how to explain it. It was very different, so we didn't spend a lot of time there. We went back to our hotel and then we like stayed up more and went to bed quite early in the morning and then woke up the next day for round two. So um, the hotel, Cape Town Lodge is quite close to all the bar hopping spots. So we went to Bree Street and Loop Street that's where these bars were and then we wanted to go to Long Street but we were told that it's not very safe to go there anymore so we skipped Long Street. Day two we woke up and got McDonald's and then we took a Uber, Uber Black, we took a Uber to Khrut Constantia and Trevino and I have been to Khrut Constantia before when we went to Cape Town in 2015 which was our first holiday ever. I think that's why Cape Town is like has such a special place in our hearts. So we went to Khrut Constantia, we went to the Uber um how was it it was different this time because we didn't go there for wine tasting we literally just went there to like eat and chill and look at the view and there's something about Const constantia like when we left constantia i went on property 24 as we in the uber driving out i'm um on property 24 looking at houses and i'm like oh, one day just one day i'd love to live here it's just I don't know, it's calm, it's serene, it's beautiful. It reminds me a little bit of where I grew up. Um, there's vineyards everywhere and the houses are just magnificent, like proper old money houses. I love Constantia. So if you do go to Khrut Constantia, you can, if you haven't been to Cape Town before and you're planning on going, you can take the red bus tour and do the purple route because it does stop at Khrut Constantia. And you can have like wine and chocolate pairings. We did that with the last time we went and you can have lunch, it's, it's a really good vibe. And the other thing that was so cute was that people bring their dogs there and I would love to take Ollie to Cape Town but I don't want to drive and I don't want to put him on a plane so I don't know how that's gonna work out. But we'll deal with that at a different stage. Next we went to Claim Constantia and we had quite a few issues with Uber at like these vineyards. Um, the Uber driver that eventually picked us up said that it was a problem with the network in the area But it took us quite a long time to connect with the driver and then when we did connect with one They'd cancel and then we had to wait longer So just beware that if you want to do like wine routes rather take the bus because it's guaranteed that you'll get picked up and go to the next one But like with the Uber it took a little bit longer to go there. So we went to Clean Constantia we did a wine uh, pay blah, blah, blah. We did a wine tasting and we got a little cheese board. It was really good. That place is also stunning. And they also offer like a vineyard safari experience. And it was 450 rand a person. And at that time when we were there, Trevino and I wanted to do it. But then the more I was thinking about it, I'm like, are we just gonna drive around and look at grape trees? Because that's not that exciting. Maybe one day that would be exciting for us. But at that point, it wasn't that exciting. So we didn't end up going for it the next day. And then that was Saturday and then Saturday night we went to visit some family of mine. We had supper with them and we just chilled and then we went back to the hotel. Sunday was our last day in Cape Town and we wanted to make the most of it. So we were up very early, like I think we were ready by 7. And then we took a drive to VNA, we went to Tasha's and we had breakfast. 
Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I said a while ago, probably towards the end of last year, Trevino wants to go to every single Tasha's in Joburg. So now that we've added one in Cape Town, it looks like we have to do all the Tasha's and there's a couple overseas also. So we've done uh, Tasha's at v &A. We had breakfast there. It was nice. It was a very pretty spot and we just chilled for a while. After Tasha's, we decided to walk around v &A and I found uh, a really nice scent that I like. Um, at what is the store called? I can't remember. There's one in Santon also. Skin cos no? I don't know. If I remember the name, I'll put it on the screen. If I don't, I'm very sorry. But they sell Lelabo fragrances. So I, um, Lelabo and Byredo, Byredo. So I tried on a Byredo, Byredo one called Mojave Ghost. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I really like the scent, but it's also very expensive. It's like 5,000 rand or something. So if anyone wants to spoil me with a gift, I would like that. I also actually went in there to um, test the Baccarat Rouge fragrance and the lady said that they never have any testers because everyone comes in and just sprays themselves and leaves. So they don't have any testers and they didn't have the one that I wanted in stock so I couldn't try that one out but that was fine. Then I went to Arc and guys also if you've been here for a while you know that I have had not the best experiences with Arc in Santon City and the arc at VNA was like completely different. All the ladies were super friendly. The manager on duty, I think her name was Mishka, very friendly, very helpful. And they were having a sale. I think it was like if you buy over a certain amount, you get 20% off or something like that. So obviously the first thing that I went to is Keali Deja Vu. Now this is my second bottle of Keali. I gave the first one away and Trevino actually bought this one to, for me. So shout out to my husband. This is Deja Vu White Flower 57. <sighs> I've said this in my first Keali video and I'm saying this now again. I don't know if South Africa is getting like B stock of things or if there's no like actual formula to, I don't know what it is, but this perfume that I have now doesn't smell the way the first one does. I was telling Trevino that this Keali is not Keali, like the first Keali used to Keali. But it's still a beautiful scent. I still love it. It's still my current favorite perfume that I wear. And it lasts long on your clothes and your hair. But for some reason, this time around, it doesn't last long on my body. Maybe it could be a change in temperature because it was summer that I have use the first one I don't know if you know anything about perfumes let me know what you think the issue is with this the second thing I got um, as you can see I went on a little Huda Keali wishful spree this was 250 Rand this is the Topaz um, obsessions and I'm wearing it on my eyes right now and I think they had the Ruby one also so this is what this palette looks like very autumn vibes and it was 250 Rand so these minis like the topaz, the ruby, and oh well, they only had the topaz and ruby. But I think there's like an emerald one or something in this collection also. I don't know. Anyway, this was 250 rand in the store. Um, I wanted to buy another one online, but they didn't have it. So I think if you go into a store, and I'm pretty sure they just opened one in Gateway also. So I know a lot of my subscribers are from Durban. So I think if you go in store, you'll be able to find that. Up next, I got this Huda Beauty Bomb Brows. And I'm using it on my eyebrows today. Um, this was 285 rand, and I think the benefit precisely, precisely my brow was 420 rand or 385 or something like that. But I know that this one was cheaper than the benefit one, and I wanted to try it out. This is my second time actually going to get this. The first time the consultant uh, in Santon told me not to get it, and then this time I was like, I'm just gonna try it. The one thing that I do have to say though, if you are used to using benefit on your eyebrows you are going to probably go in um, with more pressure when you use this. I'm very sorry if the lighting is changing. It's cloudy today, so just deal. I even have the ring light in front of me, but I'm sorry. So this is very, very thin. And I think that actually this is one of Huda's USPs is that, um, that they have the thinnest eyebrow tip thing in the world or something like that. So I actually have this on my eyebrows today and I'm using their uh, obsessions on my eyelids. And I'm very happy with the way this product works. Obviously, it's just very, very thin. So you have to be super, super light with your hand. Otherwise, you will break it. And the one thing that the consultant did tell me 
and it obviously makes sense because the science she said because this one is thinner it will finish faster and you'll have to replace it again which i guess maybe that's why it's cheaper also than the benefit one and then finally from my mini arc haul um wishful so the consultant again like I just like it when you go somewhere like whether it's at a restaurant or whether you're buying something and the person helping you doesn't force you to buy the most expensive thing and they like do what makes sense so i was gonna like take a whole lot of wishful things and then the lady asked me she's like did you try wishful before and i said no i haven't so she told me she showed me this mini pack and she told me to try this out first before i buy a full pack so in this mini pack um, oh, and this was 250 grams which is very 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 affordable for the product that you're getting i was waiting for this moment i already did try this out on saturday night um, i had a mini skincare party for one so this yoglo enzyme which if you remember when it came out it was like making waves on social media because of the innovation behind it i used this i really like the way it made my skin feel and then i also this wishful honey whoop moisturizer also used this i'm probably going to repurchase these two products again and add it to my skin routine and i think I'm gonna start adding more wishful products to my skin routine because I really like the way my skin felt. I just wanna try it out more and see if it is making a difference to my skin like they claim on social media or if it's not. And then I've got this Thirst Trap Juice which is a, a serum um, in here which I was waiting for this video and then I'm gonna open this when I do my next skincare night. So that is what I got from uh, my little Cape Town haul from ARC at VNA. Up next, we um, when we finished at VNA, we walked through. So Tasha's is on one side, then it's VNA, and then it's the actual waterfront. So we walked through everything and we went to the waterfront. And I wanted to go to Kifo, Kwefo, whatever, it's, however it's pronounced. But we saw boats. And when we went on honeymoon to Cape Town, Torino booked for us to go on a helicopter. So this time we were like, okay, let's go on a boat. So we booked. I think it was called Sea Princess or something Princess. I can't remember what it's called. I'm so sorry. But it was 400 Rand for a Sunset Champagne Cruise. And it was one of the best experiences we've ever had. When we first got on the boat, things were looking a bit like suspicious. And we we're like, Ugh, we're not going to enjoy this. It's an hour and a half. Ugh. Once the music started playing, it was epic. Like one of the best experiences we've ever had. And just to like, they, they take the boat from... VNA waterfront and you go to Clifton and you park and you like watch the sunset and there's champagne everywhere and there's music and everyone's having a good time. Um, it was Sister Bettina, obviously that's on a national anthem that had to play. Um, I can't remember anything, but it was like a mix of songs. There was even, what is this African song that I know? Akvil Hayes <laughs> Tuchan. And everyone like literally doesn't, doesn't matter. It didn't matter how old you were or what your race was or whatever. Literally everyone in that boat was having the best time ever. So if you can, go for a sunset and champagne yacht cruise from VNA to Clifton. Um, I think we paid 400 Rand per person. Totally worth it. And I'm pretty sure it lasted more than one and a half hours. Because I think we departed at four or five and we came back when it was very dark. And just seeing the mountain from the water as the sun sets and then everything is dark and then it's just lights it's ah uh, i don't know cape town is just magic cape town is magic oh but anyway i jumped through the day so we first booked our cruise that was around like 11 or something and then we decided to take a drive so we went to clifton no we went to camps bay and i was googling on the way i'm like best seafood places in camps bay and we found something called um what was the first place it was like behind i can't remember but anyway we wanted to be on the main road so we look at the ocean we have this thing where we need to look at the ocean if we buy the ocean i want to look at the ocean so we went to a place called Bilboa. i don't know like everything about those holiday was just like planned by god the food was fantastic i had i think it was the white fish but it was fish and I had broccoli and it was it was so damn good. Trevino also got fish. I'll add in whatever photos I can find. And it was delicious. So if you um, can go, go to Bilboa. 100% recommend it. We'll definitely be back there. Such a good experience. Service was amazing. The view is 
fabulous if you want to go there for some content the inside of the restaurant is also very pretty very nude and neutral and glamorous and the food is also just i think um our favorite place that we ate at was nobu and then second was boboa like oh so good so good so good after lunch trivino wanted to go to the beach now when i got up it was cold so i had stockings on and boots and he had sneakers on and i was like i'm not gonna do this in camps bay where there's so many people let's drive out and find something so we took the drive like going towards chapman's peak and then we found something called oda kral it's a, a sand parks picnic spot and we paid i think it was like 60 rand a person or something to get in so we didn't know what we were getting into because we literally just saw people there and it was like a small area so i'm like okay we can go there um and it was such a cute picnic spot for families there were couples there were families they were like friends everyone was just chilling brying um playing in the water well there was one kid playing in the water because the water came down his eyes so if we go back when we go back to cape town and if we go with family or friends or whatever I definitely want to go back to the spot for picnic because it was quite beautiful and you can see like the mountains nicely i think it's 12 apostles those mountains that you can see really really pretty so we went there and um, i hid behind a very big boulder and i took my boots off and i took my stockings off my skirt was very 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 short that i was wearing like if you're not wearing those stockings it's the black leather one so i um was just like dipping my feet in the water you know when you go come from joburg like beach water you need to get in the water but it was so nice it was fun and it was ice but it was a good experience and then we went back to our hotel because we needed to change and get ready for the boat ride and then we went on the boat ride it was amazing it was epic i already spoke to you guys about that 10 out of 10 would recommend going on that boat ride and then the plan was when we were waiting in line to get on the boat we said that we were going to have supper at this place on the vna waterfront that i wanted to go to from the first time we went to cape town i can't remember what it's called now but it's like right there and it's like white and wood and there's like hanging things i don't know but anyway by the time we got off that boat we were very tired and our flight the next morning was super early we woke up at half past three the next morning so we just decided to go back to the room and we got room service no we didn't get room service we got Uber Eats. We got, I think it was called New York Slice or something. Pizza was very tasty and very, very good. The next morning, we woke up super early to catch our flight, return the car. And our flight was delayed by like an hour and a half, which was very frustrating. But it is what it is. Um, we both agree that this was like the best holiday that we've ever been on. Everything was just perfect and like you could just see god's hand on everything everything just worked out it was honestly the most amazing holiday i've ever had in my entire life and i know that part of it is because i wasn't creating content so if you are a content creator that's watching this make sure that you go on holidays where you're not creating content so this wasn't like a work trip where i had to create content it was more like a mind body soul trip and it was so good i just oh i don't know i love cape town a lot I always say that when I'm leaving Cape Town, I feel so sad. And honestly, if we didn't have Ollie, um, I would have extended our trip in Cape Town because we both had our laptops with us and would have stayed longer. We were considering relocating to Cape Town, but I don't think I'd want to live there. Like, unless it's retirement in um, Constantia, I don't want to live in Cape Town. I, I like the pace of Joburg, but Cape Town is like, I don't know, if you haven't been to Cape Town, I would highly suggest planning a trip to go it's very cold now like in winter i know the cape town gets super cold that was my cape town rundown i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to share comment subscribe i'm so close to 5,000 subscribers thank you guys for all your subscriptions and i will see you guys probably next week for a new video bye Bellas.